Hey folks, welcome to Market Technical Analysis by InTheMoneyStocks.com for October 3rd, 2007. Well, October 3rd, today Wednesday, was an overall down day in the markets, and we'll get into a little bit on that quickly. Uh, but first of all, I want to just keep everyone posted on the Apprentice webinar coming up next week, next uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, and next Saturday. Uh, the Saturday will be a five-hour course. Tuesday and Wednesday will be a dual nighttime course, and uh, this is all East Coast time, and it will be two and a half hours from Tuesday night and Wednesday night. Everything that will be going over will be all technical analysis, fully functioning technical analysis, everything you could possibly want to know about uh, candlesticks and technical tools and everything like that. Come join it. Come find it on the InTheMoneyStocks.com website. Okay, getting right into it, guys. Today we saw a small pullback in the market. The Nasdaq was down 17. The Dow was down about uh, 70 on the day, about close to 80. And the S&P was down 7. Now, what was interesting about today is that overall we had some mixed news uh, in this market. The, uh, the preliminary job number came out today, and this is the one that's looking towards Friday, and it was really of no surprise. But we've been talking about how this market is very, very overbought. And we had even been talking about, even though we took out on the NASDAQ, the high from before here, I wasn't sold on a, on a go-long course yet. And the reason being is this. You see the extension here above the 20, how long it's been? Notice all prior areas. The, the market can always go above the 20 for so long, or below the 20, in this case, at some point it needs to come back and touch that 20. And we're seeing that here, except this is a longer stretch than we're used to. And at that point, I have to believe that we need to come down and meet this 20 moving average here at some point. All right. And having said that, you all know yesterday I announced for the first time in about uh, probably since since late, you know, early early August, when before right before we rallied, I said, all right, now guys, I am taking a, a, a stock position or an ETF position, the DXD. Picked up the DXD yesterday, and uh, we'll punch that up the DXD and uh, I said I picked it up on uh, yesterday which was this day here at uh, uh, 1 uh, we picked it up around let's see what price did we get it at 45.50 or so and we said we were gonna hold it long now the DXD is two times short the Dow and I gotta believe that at some point just like this extension below it has to come up here so I said to myself you know what let's go for it let's give it a shot we're starting with a small position here inching our way in and at some point we need to make a retrace back up here and try and touch that 20 moving average. Today looks all good. Uh, today we saw another gain in that. I was up yesterday and we were up again today on that position. And right now, after hours, it's trading at, at about $46, about up 50 cents, even though the closing price was only up 13 cents. Okay, now going over that. So again, we are there, but obviously consult your financial advisor if you're looking into doing something like that. Uh, I'm just giving you what I am doing here, not my, uh, my advice in any regard. Now, what I want to show you here, guys, is that we're going to flip over to the ES chart. And overall, we saw an interesting chart today. And I want to point out a couple things on uh, with my toolkit here. Uh, we saw a nice little buying frenzy come in right around 10 o'clock. All right. So what we usually there are time frames for reversals. And the first reversal is 10 o'clock. And we always talk about this in the chat room as being a, a place to watch for a reversal of trend. And that's what we saw. So you saw initially at the open, we sold off. All right, we sold off right here. You can see these couple red bars. And then starting around 10 o'clock, we really started to rally. And we rallied almost up straight until about 11, um, almost 11.30. We topped out right here. And this coincides with about 11.30 right here. And then basically all afternoon, we sell, sold off all the way till about 3 o'clock, at which point we rallied into the close slightly to close mixed in the, in the uh, you know, from our lows to highs. We weren't on the lows, but we weren't on the highs either kind of in between to the lower end of things. And again, the NASDAQ was down 17. The NASDAQ at its lows was down in the 20s, and we saw a sell-off. Now, again, let's look at this chart here. And we keep on talking about these trend lines here, and I want to point this out again. This trend line is a key trend line. And overall, you guys can see right here, we're in a pattern. We're in this kind of area right in here where we are in this trend. It's a channel. It's what's called a channel. And this channel basically tells us that we hit off the lows and then hit off the high end of the channel, come down, up, down, up. And you can basically, until we break this trend, you can play this trend as going long here, right here on the line, and going short up here. And essentially us taking a position here, uh, we were looking for this move back down here. Now should we break below and close below that 20, see how it coincides with the 20 moving average right here? 
Should we break below and close below that 20 moving average, that's when you're going to see some major activity to the downside. However, should we just bounce off and head back up, then we're going to stay in this channel until we break out of a channel. Now, generally, a channel like this is a bearish channel. What do I mean by that? Well, notice that each high here it makes is a higher high. There's only so many times a market can do that until it fails. And that's a possible happening right here. And I want to point this out here. Notice this point right here. Essentially, what we could be seeing here is a possible little double top. And I'm just I'm monitoring this to see. What I really want to see is that this little uh, day today, I want to see this continue down today. And I want to see it come down even more over the next couple of days and form this double top. In addition, it's a sloppy M, but I also want to monitor this M. Could this be an M pattern here? All right, because M patterns are notoriously bear patterns, and they form a, another spike down here, which could be coincide with a hit here of this line. Then you form an A pattern, which is a small move up, and then you come down, and the next time you come down, you break much lower here and fall all the way down, uh, breaking that trend. And that would coincide with this breaking out of that channel. So that is something that I'm monitoring to see if it develops. All right, and again, that's all consist needs to be consistent on whether or not we break out of this double top area. All right, in this near term area. Now, of course, this is the ES daily, and the ES, the ES daily is much different than the NASDAQ. And I want to point out the NASDAQ here. And what we're going to see here is the NASDAQ has been much stronger, and it continues to be, even though it was down about 17 points today. But again, you can see how we took out the high from before the fall in, in August, late July into August. But now we're kind of stalling here. And the question is do we come back in here, and does this turn out to be a double top as well? Because the strongest double tops are tops where they take out the previous high. And this is very important to remember because think about it this way. Everything in this market is always done to the opposite of the majority. If you think that if you and everyone else thinks the market's going down, it's going up, and if you and everyone else think the market's going up, it's going down. Now, what happens when you break the high? Well, in general, a double top, everyone likes to see the perfect double top where it hits the exact top and falls right down. Well, in theory, what good is that because everyone knows that that's the double top. So what we really want to see here is it break and close above the double top and then reverse down once it's closed over and gone up maybe even just this one extra day. And the reason why that's key is because from a technical standpoint, many amateurs can say, oh, well, we just broke out to the upside. Let's go long. All right, so we closed above this line right here because there's a double top high. All right, we broke the double top. We closed above. Now let's go long. So all the amateurs are going long, 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 and long, long in this market. And all of a sudden, big money says, okay, now we have enough people long. Let's spike this down, make the, stop them out, take their money, and spike this market lower. So again, I just want to caution everyone, these are games that are played, and you need to understand that it's not as simple. No, no charting pattern is dead on. You have to realize the little games. You want to figure out a good place to go short or long in a market based on where you think everyone else just went opposite you. All right? And that's usually the key. Now, this is just speculation that this is a double top. All right? We don't know yet. Whether or not it's a double top, it will depend on the coming days, and we'll monitor that to see if it falls down. But it is something that needs to be watched very closely. Again, you still have the trend on the NASDAQ. You have this area here. But what I want to point out here is that on this, you're basically hitting the top end of that channel, as opposed to the S&P, which was a little lower. So we are hitting the top of that channel as well. And this channel, notice the parallel lines. The best channels are parallel lines, exactly parallel. And that's what we have here. Okay. So again, there's a possibility that we did form a little double top here, just fake people out by going above, and we will come down. I'm going to continue to hold my DXD, although once I get in the money, a dollar on that position, my stock will go to break even, and then worst case scenario, it's a flat trade if I am wrong on this. Okay. Uh, right now, we keep a very tight stop on it, just a little bit of below the entry since we are up nicely on that position already. All right. So tomorrow will tell a lot, but again, really the market could be waiting on this jobs number. The main jobs number should come on Friday, and that's really what seems to the market to be holding its breath. In addition, just on the overbought nature in this market, look at the flatlining stochastics again. I point this out every day, and today maybe on this first down little drip, we saw the first chink in the armor here on these stochastics. These stochastics have been overbought for some time now, and they really need to come in a little. So keep a watch on that. All in all, guys, the chat room still still seems to be king. All right, it's just been a phenomenal day trading chat room. The volatility in the intraday periods of of the stocks is just a great time. Uh, small caps continue to run. Large caps seem to be in in the, in the mix as well, but to a lesser extent. And uh, overall, just a phenomenal run left and right. I'm just pointing out a couple of them here today, guys. We saw major volatility still in the Chinese stocks. JRJC up and down two three dollars intraday. 
EFUT. Look at this spike up. It was up huge yesterday here, and then it gapped up huge on news today, going up something like 60%. And last but not least, CHNR. All right, this stock was up 75% yesterday to close at about $27.85, and it went up to as high as $48 today. It went up as much as $20 today intraday, closing up $11. All right, these, this volatility in these Chinese sector just, just amazes me, and I happen to think we are near a top in those. The, the, usually when the smaller stocks run, when the smaller stocks run, and that's the ending of a pattern in the market, okay? So I happen to think that this is getting near. I'm going to watch China tonight because I think it could be it could be a down night for China, though we won't know for sure. It's a tough call, but I would, I would not be surprised after Hong Kong took a little bit of a hit yesterday. All right, folks? Anyways, have a wonderful day. Watch this market closely. It's going to be some fireworks coming soon. Have a wonderful night, guys. Talk to you tomorrow.